Hello, joining me is uh, Shanavas, sir. Uh, he is the Principal Director of School Education, Department of School Education here in Nagaland. And he is also currently the Project Director for the Nagaland World Bank funded uh, project known as the Nagaland Education Project. So I'm having a conversation with him today on various issues related to education and many other stuffs. So nice to have you, sir, here. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure, Ransom. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, sir, what do you think? Uh, Nag why do you think Nagaland is um, lagging behind so much when it comes to enrollment and when it comes to dropout rates um, in the government schools? Okay. See, government schools. Uh, it has been a history. Earlier, you can see many of your the present day officers mm -hmm. or even the elders speaking about like speaking good about government schools. They That's all studied right. in government schools, right. and suddenly when it comes to this era after th 30, 40 years, they also feel sad to see the enrollment going down and all. Mm -hmm. So th it it didn't happen like over one year or two years. Is like accumulated problems for many years or many right. decades. So exactly. when you don't have a good uh, infrastructure for the students to sit in and study, mm -hmm. and when you don't have a proper monetary mechanism or proper learning outcome mm -hmm. assessment happening right. in the government right. schools, mm -hmm. so we are all failing in our part. I'm not telling, I'm not blaming only the teachers alone or all, only the community alone. So it's a collective failure from the top to bottom. Everyone like mm -hmm. we are all responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's okay. We don't have to just sit back and relax saying that it has all failed. Yeah. So we are all have to do our bit from every level. Mm -hmm. So things will change. And the first thing we all need to be optimistic on, like if yeah. we don't just uh, brand uh, education department as like it won't change, it will be like this forever. It's yeah. not like that. We need to have that optimism with us. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we need to create the check and balances so that uh, the things will get better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you know, with all these issues that you are imagining and you are um, sharing with us, mm -hmm. um, what do you think would be the earliest or maybe, uh, let's say, for one issue would be the possible uh, res solution for, you know, all this education system in Nagaland? Okay. What would you suggest? See, the best uh, issue is like infrastructure, everything. It's going to take some time. Yeah. But when you talk about, if we can ensure that our teachers are all there, in the schools mm -hmm. and uh, they teach and mm -hmm. the students attend the classes, just ensuring that the classroom teaching is happening mm -hmm. in the schools because when I was in a uh, deputy commission also in many districts we visited some schools okay but unfortunately we could find some schools not functioning at all we go to that school during a mm -hmm. working hour mm -hmm. but the school is actually literally closed mm -hmm. no teacher is going there no student is going there right. so just by ensuring that the teachers are student and students are there in the schools mm -hmm. on every working day okay. some classroom teaching is happening right so we can ensure that the things will start from there okay mm -hmm. so that ensuring that is like our uh, immediate priority I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, as per like the general observation and opinion, I think when you taking up the principal director of school education, many people have lots of hope on you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you may be aware or that's what I observe from people whom I have uh, talked to on the, r on the road or you know with mm -hmm. friends and all. Um, and there was during the pandemic last year, mm -hmm. um, there was some little bit of criticism during you know, when the department mm -hmm. asked students to connect online for education or mm -hmm. for classrooms mm -hmm. and all. Um, of course, there were a lot of challenges to connect yeah. online, but the department anyway went ahead with the plan to, mm -hmm. you know, distribute online teaching materials. Mm -hmm. And what made you decide? See, first of all, uh, a person cannot change a department or right. a person cannot change the government. Okay, mm -hmm. So it, the person has a back seat. Mm -hmm. It has to be the department or the government as such. Mm -hmm. Of course, the person, the officers will come and go. Mm -hmm. So if I do something today and if uh, tomorrow, if I go, the things are going back to square one. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for that way, anyone, like not only me, if you come to the department yeah. and you go tomorrow, things are going back to the square one, then that is... That's not a sustainable change or a very long-lasting change. Exactly. So you need to actually change the system. So mm -hmm. systemic development is what we need. Exactly. Of course, officers and other staff, they are like instruments for that. But uh, we have to make sure that the system is in place. That okay. is the first thing, first okay. part of your question. Okay. Coming to the second part of your mm -hmm. question, the connectivity issues. Nagaland is very remote. Right. And right. I personally have worked in all the remote areas. I okay. was never posted to Koima or Dimapur before my coming <laughs> here. Okay. I was in Twensang, Moon, Zinoboto, Peg, like that. So I know about the connectivity and the issues. Mm -hmm. But these issues have been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly when the pan pandemic happened in March 2020, right. we thought 15 days it will be over, first phase. Right. It was not over. Then another 15 days. Uh -huh. So then we got a feeling that it's, not go it's going to go on. And by that time, some states in India start started with this giving online education and all, mm -hmm. which was already happening in many other states and countries because their system is already developed mm -hmm, true 
so we all we always like had an option to just sit back and relax for the pandemic to get over yeah, yeah. that was the best option right which is like even uh, relaxing for us we just have to sit back and relax but sure. we thought we thought uh, that won't be the way yeah. let us try everything mm -hmm. so let's try everything so the students will get benefited not even not if 100 percentage let 30 40 mm -hmm. and uh, so we started with doordarshan and all in the radio mm -hmm. then we started with uh, youtube facebook okay then of course connectivity issues and everything there yeah, yeah. then we thought we will give some all these lessons mm -hmm. we will give it in pen drives to all the schools also okay. then also there was a lot of criticism that uh, yeah. where do where do you want us to connect the pen drive to the resource right. system so, exactly. so these issues are there issues. and education department suddenly one day we cannot uh, start distributing exactly. pen drives uh, sorry uh, yeah, computers laptops, and laptops exactly. to all the schools and all the students that's yeah. humanly impossible also Very true. but we were thinking th let us give this and uh, the community churches it's yeah. everyone's collective responsibility education yeah right. we, when it comes to the future generation it's everyone's responsibility right. the, if they have a computer or the teacher has a laptop yeah. let him be the instrument sure. let him call that students and uh, get this information done then we also side by side we told all the teachers to go to their uh, schools and be in station okay and we try to monitor their movement also mm -hmm. so it was like Plan A, if plan A is not working, plan B, if plan B is not working, plan sure. C, and go on, so on and sure, on. Exactly. Because no plan was perfect, and we yeah. had to experiment everything. Mm -hmm. We experimented everything. We are still experimenting everything. Sure. So uh, we don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. We don't have any regrets. And in fact, we were ha we are happy that uh, we could at least do something. Mm -hmm. Of course, rural areas, it, we couldn't connect much because the connectivity issue we cannot alone go to the uh, villages and start erecting towers yeah. it's not possible <laughs> it has to be a convergent effort Very with true. all by all the departments and everyone true. so things will improve let's hope mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have better connectivity because we don't we also don't want our students to lag behind mm -hmm. the students in other states and countries so okay. we want to give them equal opportunities mm -hmm. so we are trying our best mm. really appreciate that um, yeah. although there are a lot of the, you know complaints and grievances from people something had to be done yeah. so your department has really done that, so I really appreciate it for that. And now, the, coming back, coming to the World Bank project, mm -hmm. which is the Nagaland Education Project, yeah. can you summarize it or tell, tell me in brief like what it, it is up all about and how it is going to help uh, transform the mm -hmm. Nagaland education system? This is a um, $68 million okay. project. That's okay. a loan amount from World Bank. $68 mm -hmm. million dollar will come to more than 500 crores. I see. So, this amount actually is uh, we are using for three components we have mainly three components in this project mm -hmm. and the first component uh, we are trying to cover all the government schools like okay. primary middle high school higher secondary mm -hmm. it has different sub components mm -hmm. we are trying to have a proper data management system we are trying to have uh, build the capacity of teachers right. smcs smdcs then we are trying to have a paig that is a performance incentive grant mm -hmm. to all the communities so that okay. one healthy competition can be uh, given to the communities and BEC so that they can actually fight for their rights mm -hmm. if they perform well we give them grants mm -hmm. we ask them to perform more yeah. so and exam reforms everything comes in component one True. and component number two is actually a lighthouse school complex concept mm -hmm. so that we have a cluster of cluster schools mm -hmm. so we are aiming to have 15 of such schools okay. covering all the districts at least mm -hmm. one in every district okay. so which will be we'll, ha we'll have a hub school and some spoke schools nearby mm -hmm. so that it will be a cluster and there will be some infrastructure development where uh, the hostels, staff quarters, everything will come up. And all the latest teaching learning materials mm -hmm. or methods, uh, computer labs and uh, vocational labs and everything will come up. Mm -hmm. And the Spock school will be able to use the resources. So okay. that is the idea of component number two. Okay. So it also has uh, subcomponents like professional development of teachers and mm -hmm. community ownership and everything. Totally. Then component three will have the technical assistance component where mm -hmm. all the technical assistance and consultancy services, mm -hmm. even the communication plan, mm -hmm. everything is laid out. Mm -hmm. Even the COVID management plan, everything is laid out for component okay. number three. Mm -hmm. So this is the brief of components. Yes. Uh, so is a big dream project, mm -hmm. I would say, just in the beginning stages. Right. So let us hope we get the support of the public. We are trying to be as transparent as possible, mm -hmm. and we are trying to ensure that each and every rupee is accounted for. True. And it's f handling such a big project would not be really an easy task. Uh, no, it is not. Yeah. yeah. And uh, after com in the completion during the completion of this project, um, how do you imagine Nakalin schools transforming into? Yeah, I d I. Honestly, don't imagine like everything to change from, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you say, the ground zero to everything like so big and uh, right, right. like you have schools in Finland and all. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. But major changes will come, mm -hmm. and the policy level changes are more important mm -hmm. for a long. A lasting impact mm -hmm. to have a proper teacher attendance monitoring system right, right. to have a proper capacity building right. 
so that everyone will take the ownership the community taking the ownership and you have some community working for the welfare of the schools mm -hmm. and we have communitization act but uh, many communities they are doing good but many they are not performing well so okay. we uh, want to create a competition and everyone performing well okay. and uh, the students are coming to school and we also aim to improve the enrollment by the end of this project mm -hmm. with all these interventions sure. so if all these targets are met I would say it's not 100% complete, but I would say we are going in the right direction okay, and wonderful. things will get completed wonderful, over sir. in some years. Yeah, I see. And um, when it comes to teachers, like teacher's absenteeism is mm -hmm. quite rampant either in, in Manipur or mm -hmm. Nagaland or Arunachal. Yeah. So, and we have seen a lot of uh, teacher absenteeism here in Nagaland also. Yeah. So, uh, how proxy teachers is one thing. Yes, 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 yes. So, how do you think would should we address this proxy yeah, teachers? Proxy teachers means they are a disgrace to those teachers who are working. Right. They are like day and night yeah. uh, going to remote places. Mm -hmm. So, if I am a teacher, if I am working hard, if some other teacher is keeping the proxies, I also get demotivated. I think that uh, if he or she is not working, why should I? True. So, that is a question you ask True. yourself. So that is why department side, like we go for some physical inspections and you ca catch some. Mm -hmm. But that is not the permanent solution. Mm -hmm. If we are not able to monitor the activities which are happening in a remote school in Twensang or Moon, then yeah. this whole uh, attempt, whatever we are making, is going to be a failure. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are going to introduce a teacher attendance monitoring system also. Okay. That is not going to punish the teachers. That is right. just to ensure that even my attendance, attendance is monitored here. If okay. I have to take leave, I have to approach my secretary or chief secretary like that. No? Right, right. So every Everyone has to be monitored. Every every activity has to For be monitored. So, yeah, transparency yeah. has to mm -hmm. be there. Sure. So we are also planning to have a teacher attendance monitoring system okay. through facial recognition, which will work offline also, mm -hmm. not necessarily online. Mm -hmm. So the data can be sto stored offline and later can be transmitted to the state headquarter. And there will be a different check-in mechanisms in the block level, school level, and uh, district level, sta and state level. Okay. So with all these interventions, if the teachers are there, mm -hmm. then they will get used to going to schools and teaching. Mm -hmm. Then they also will find interest and the yes. students will find interest. Yes. So that is how a school will progress. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, and also I would like to congratulate you for receiving the Governor yeah. Gold Medal Award. Thank you. And what was it about, if you can uh, you see, It share. was for the meritorious public service. Okay. okay. But honestly, of course, it's a recognition and it's a good thing for my career personally mm -hmm. also. But uh, okay. more than that, I think uh, is that is like a motivation mm -hmm. to do more things for the department because mm -hmm. I received on behalf of the Department of School Education okay. for whatever little things we have done we are not done enough there is still more to do true, true. so it is kind of a motivation true. if some officers get recognized uh, we feel that uh, okay this government is also supporting mm -hmm. and we need to mo do more so okay. that is kind of a motivation I would say mm -hmm. and uh, when it comes to your career that you mentioned yeah. um, when did you crack this UPSC exam I cracked in 2000 12 I joined. 2012 uh, I yeah. you joined. Yeah. And you chose Nagaland like uh, so we to have to give our yeah, right. preferences of cadres. Right. We give our preferences. Mm -hmm. Then the merit comes in and the pr priorities comes in and uh, right. the DOPT allows the cadres. So I got allotted Nagaland cadre. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, as per your experience so far, mm. how has Nagaland been to you? Nagaland has been good to me. Means okay. I am not uh, flattering Nagaland just like mm. that. Of okay. course, Nagaland needs improvement. Nagaland True. needs good roads. True. Nagaland needs good development. True. Nagaland True. needs good tourism. And everything has to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all lacking. Okay, But right. uh, otherwise, the society as such has uh, welcomed me mm -hmm. as own son. Okay. And uh, I all... I have best of experiences in Nagaland mm -hmm. and I have good, still good friends in all the places I have worked. Right. So even I went to a field visit last one, two weeks also mm -hmm. in the district. So I got a very warm response means mm -hmm. like they are still remembering me. So I think that is the best and the society is very egalitarian. Mm -hmm. It's not that you do anything and they will respect you. You mm -hmm. do good things, people respect you. True. And you do bad things, people don't respect you. True. So that is the way even I, I like. Wonderful. Uh, so mm -hmm. you do good to the society, they will remember you. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And um, I think we have lots and lots of um, UPSC or civil mm -hmm. service aspirants here in Nagaland also. Okay. So um, as being, a, some, being someone who has mm -hmm. really cracked that exam, mm -hmm. what would be the few advices, the top most advices that we would like to give to them? I would like to give, see, you, first of all, UPSC is not a rocket science. Okay? Right. <laughs> it means, and uh, getting UPSC or being an IAS officer is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. First thing you should understand. Okay? <laughs> then, treat it, treat it as an examination, which mm -hmm. you're going to write. Mm -hmm. And there is a prescribed syllabus yeah. for whatever you are choosing, optional yeah. or anything, there is a syllabus. Sure, and there are books prescribed for uh, studying, mm -hmm. means you have to study all these books for this subject like that. Okay. Stick to that, mm -hmm. 
and uh, be disciplined in your life mm-hmm. i'm not asking to study for 15 16 hours i had never yeah. done that i never done that in in a day it is humanly impossible right we also need some entertainment some fun we yeah. need a good sleep we need good food and everything okay. and you have to play some games you have to keep your mind and body fresh that mm-hmm. is all done but keep some hours for studying mm-hmm. and when you study stick to the syllabus what we do in upsc we tend to digress a lot from the syllabus mm-hmm. some some people i have seen mm-hmm. if you want to study about some history you go to some unnecessary areas where which is not relevant sure. and waste your time sure so that discipline is very important mm-hmm. and uh, believing in yourself that you can do it because to clear an ias of uh, b uh, upsc and b an ias or ips officer you don't have to score uh, 90 95 percentage from your class 10 that's mm-hmm. not done you can see people are just passed their graduation with 40 45 percentage also becoming an ias officer so wow. it is actually the discipline that matters mm-hmm. and it is a focus that matters mm-hmm. and you have to work hard mm-hmm. and the competition is very high so what i have seen uh, upsc aspirants in nagaland is that people some people go to delhi and all yeah. they spend one two years yeah. and uh, they roam around in delhi enjoy delhi right. and they give one two attempts in prelims <laughs> if they think they cannot clear they just come back they just give yeah. up so yeah. that giving up attitude should not be there mm-hmm. and we have to think that we are second to none there are students studying we are also studying mm-hmm. so we are all equal mm-hmm. but whoever is more focused and whoever is putting in more hard work will mm-hmm. clear it as simple as that okay so do you think that people preparing here in nagaland itself We can, can really correct if they're disciplined yeah, I, and focused. Yeah, I actually prepared from Kerala only. I never okay. went to Delhi. Never. And I prepared from Trivandrum only in a Kerala Government Civil Service Institute. I mm-hmm. didn't pay much also because I honestly didn't have the money to go to Delhi and pay. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to ask my parents also. So, I, I was there in Kerala only but you should know what you're doing. Exactly. You should actually know what you're doing and what you're aiming for. Mm-hmm. So, totally. no one will come and spoon feed you. Yeah. You have to go in search of books. You totally. have to read. you have to do some model question papers mm-hmm. and you have to assess your performance True. and if you think your performance is not good enough then put more hard work True. give one more examination after one week mm-hmm. then Im- try to improve your performance you are the best judge of yourself i see that's wonderful yeah. and i'm really personally glad and happy that uh, you are here t- you know to lead the education department as well as my pleasure yeah the nagaland um, education project in this very very challenging time for everyone especially yes. for the state like nagaland yes. So thanks for giving me this time to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, it's my honor and pleasure. And I look forward to talking to you again. Okay, sure. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you.